because vegetarian is the quickest and most effective and long lasting forever and it will halt the global warming right where it is and it will even improve our world our world will become better because of the loving energy that we generate being vegetarian stops the killing circle and reduce greenhouse gases most quickly please continue watching to find out more Supreme Master Ching Hai's lectures are not a complete meditation instruction. Please do not try alone. For free of charge guidance, please visit godsdirectcontact.org or contact any of our centers near you. Today's episode will be presented in English with subtitles in Arabic. Aulaxis, also known as Vietnamese, Bulgarian, Chinese, Croatian, Czech, English, French, German, Hindi, Hungarian, Indonesian, Italian, Japanese, Korean, Malay, Mongolian, Persian, Polish, Portuguese, Punjabi, Russian, Sinhalese, Spanish, and Thai. Halo dan salam, para pemisah yang luar biasa, nama saya Umi, dari Medan, di Indonesia, dengan kekayaan yang berlimpah. Sebagai kepulauan terbesar di dunia, Indonesia terdiri dari 17.508 pulau yang terbentang antara benua Asia dan Australia. Sebagai kepulauan pasar rempah-rempah, Indonesia adalah negara berpenduduk terbanyak keempat di dunia. Mengelilingi ribuan pulau kecil dengan garis pantai lebih dari 80.000 km. Laut tropis Indonesia yang hangat juga memiliki tingkat keanekaragaman hayati yang tinggi disertai berbagai ekosistem yang meliputi pantai, gumuk pasir, muara, hutan bakau, terumbu karang, hamparan rumput laut, hamparan lumpur pantai, dataran pasang surut, hamparan ganggang, dan ekosistem pulau kecil. Dengan jumlah pulaunya yang besar, Tidaklah mengejutkan bila di Indonesia terdapat kira-kira 300 kelompok etnis masing-masing dengan tradisi yang unik dan indah yang berkontribusi pada kebudayaan modern Indonesia yang dinamis. Maha Guru Qinghai memiliki kasih yang besar kepada rakyat Indonesia dan telah berceramah di negeri yang mulia ini. Tahun 2014, beliau mengirim surat kepada Yang Mulia Joko Widodo untuk memberi ucapan selamat karena terpilih sebagai Presiden Indonesia. Beliau mengakhiri surat hangatnya kepada Yang Mulia dengan menyatakan, dengan semua harapan terbaik saya, Semoga surga memberkati Anda dan rakyat Indonesia yang baik hati. Merupakan satu keistimewaan untuk bercerita pada Anda sekilas tentang Indonesia yang selalu memikat. Kami berdoa agar welas asih Anda melingkupi semua makhluk. Selama lebih dari tiga dekade, Maha Guru Qinghai telah menerangi dunia kita dengan ajaran ilahi beliau. 
Seorang guru yang tercerahkan sepenuhnya, beliau mengajarkan metode Kuan kepada mereka yang ingin dengan segera menemukan hakikat Tuhan di dalam batin agar dalam satu masa kehidupan bisa mencapai kebebasan abadi dari silklus kelahiran kembali. Metode Kuan Yin telah dilatih oleh semua guru tercerahkan seperti Buddha, Yesus Kristus, Nabi Muhammad, Damai Besertanya, dan Guru Nana. Beliau menekankan bahwa jika kita selalu mengingat Tuhan, memberi pelayanan tanpa pamri kepada pihak lain, dan mengikuti hukum alam semesta, kita akan mencapai potensi tertinggi kita sebagai manusia dan benar-benar memahami tujuan kita berada di bumi. Maha Guru Ching Hai adalah sebuah teladan hidup yang luar biasa tentang welas asi yang secara teratur memberikan bantuan materi dan finansial dan juga cinta kasih kepada para pengungsi, Tuna Wisma, korban bencana alam, dan bantuan lainnya yang diperlukan. Di tahun 2006, beliau menerima penghargaan Gusi Perdamaian yang dianggap sebagai penghargaan Nobel Perdamaian dari Timur dan telah dianugerahi selama bertahun-tahun dengan banyak penghargaan lain dan pujian atas tindakan kedermawanan dan kemanusiaan beliau yang luar biasa. Menjadi suara yang bisa diandalkan bagi sahabat satwa kita yang elok, beliau mempropagandakan pola makan nabati yang penuh kasih dan damai, serta memimpikan terbangkitnya kesadaran manusia akan kesakralan semua kehidupan, dunia vegan sepenuhnya yang tentram dan mulia, di mana hewan dan manusia hidup dalam keharmonisan yang membahagiakan. Prakarsa beliau untuk menyebarkan tren vegan melalui berbagai cara dan mencakup pembagian selebaran cara hidup alternatif, jaringan restoran vegan internasional Loving Heart, Supreme Master Television, dan juga secara teratur berbicara kepada pemerintah yang berpengaruh dan pemimpin-pemimpin media serta berpartisipasi dalam konferensi televisi mengenai perubahan iklim yang kita sadari ataupun tidak, upaya-upaya beliau telah memiliki pengaruh besar terhadap kesadaran global tentang gaya hidup yang ramah terhadap hewan dan bagaimana cara penuh kebajikan ini bisa menghadirkan perdamaian yang langgeng di antara bangsa-bangsa sambil menyelamatkan planet kita dari perubahan iklim. Selama bertahun-tahun, Maha Guru Ching Hai telah ke berbagai penjuru dunia, dari Amerika ke Afrika, dari Eropa ke Oseania, dan mengadakan ratusan ceramah kepada masyarakat umum dan murid-murid beliau mengenai berbagai topik spiritual. Hari ini kita terberkahi untuk bisa menghadirkan salah satu ceramah yang berwawasan berjudul Berhematlah itu dimulai dari meja kita. Kutipan dari Ceramah Mahaguru Ching Hai bagian ke-1 dari dua seri di acara antara guru dan murid yang disampaikan dalam bahasa Inggris. You said that we came uh, on the earth to bless the oh, world. Yeah. Could you develop a little more? I say you, all of us. Oh, yes, 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 sure. I have explained that um, very clearly before. And there are many other tapes concerning that. So you can uh, see it again. But you see, we came, otherwise the earth is not peopled. Yeah? And only plants and grass and rocks and water. So we came from different world into this physical body to people this world, to make it lively. Nous sommes venus sur cette planète pour peupler la planète, pour l'embellir, parce qu'il n'y avait pas d'habitants avant. Il y avait... Also, we like it. 
Merci parce que nous aimons. It's better. You have just like we immigrate to. <laughs> c'est mieux, c'est comme si nous immigrions. Yes. So we bless it with our presence. Voilà, nous bénissons la planète de yes. notre présence. And our intelligence. Et par notre intelligence. And then we, because of that, we build houses, yeah. And we uh, look after the environment. Otherwise, this place is also a jungle. Et like comme ça, nous, nous créons des maisons. Sinon, toute la, la planète n'est qu'une jungle. Une jungle. Yeah. So, for example, huh? we bless it with our intelligence, with our talent. Nous bénissons la planète de notre intelligence et par notre talent. Also, with our invisible loving power. Et aussi par notre pouvoir d'amour qui est invisible. Yeah. But then, when we stay here too long. We seem to identify with the job we do, with the physical instrument, and then we are trapped here. Therefore, we have to need we need a master to tell us that hey, 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 remember, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's not that, it's not you. So remember again. So we practice again. Then we will remember our origin. And then we can go back home again. Mais si nous restons trop longtemps, nous commençons à nous identifier avec notre travail, avec notre corps. Donc nous avons besoin du maître pour nous rappeler notre origine, pour pouvoir pratiquer à ce moment-là, retourner dans notre nom. We depleted the earth because we raised cattle and animals. Actually, this one of another way to contribute to our earth planet. You know all this. You read more books than I ever can imagine. Yeah, about vegetarian, about how to save our world, about environmental love and all kind of things. And vegetarian diet is the answer to all these questions. Our earth is collapsing because we eat too much meat. Actually, or we have to put it that way. Roughly, roughly, it's like that. You know, every minute. Every year we cut down forests as big as England just to raise animals. So how many rainforests has been destroyed? And this change atmosphere, change the rain. That's why our planet is heating up, heating up, and then many places are having problem with flood and also drought, long period. You remember? So if we want to save the planet, if we want to preach environmental care, we should be vegetarian. There's no, no other thing to do, right? And that is just a small thing compared to all the vaccination and all the water, pure water used for meat and things like that. You already read a newspaper and, and magazines and television every day. I just remind you, just a small portion of it. But the, the harmful effect of the meat diet is larger than life. Animals are our brothers and sisters. It's very important we know to live with them harmoniously and respectfully because they are there for some reason. You see, there are some birds or some animals to do some special job uh, in this world, yeah? Some are cleaning garbage like the vulture. <laughs> They have something to do with the whole environment. They balance our planetary uh, ecosystem, ecology system, yeah, to balance the nature. So make the atmosphere good and clean and all that. Everything has something. Like trees, yeah, they are there to ox- uh, to give ox- oxygen to the planet. Without trees, we die. Really, we will. We die without trees. The water will be less because there are no trees to attract water and to keep water when it's there. So everything in, on this planet, including us, are interrelated and are helping each other to make our life here comfortable and livable, ne? comfortably. But if we don't know that, we are killing ourselves. Every time we kill a tree or kill an animal, we're killing a little part of ourselves. If we have to cut trees, we replant some more, not three more more. But still, that takes time to grow up. So if you intend to cut tree, you have to plant beforehand. Take long time for a tree to have the ability to produce uh, good air, yeah, and absor- absorb the, the bad air for us. Take a long time. 
So a bigger and older tree has more ability than a younger plant tree, even though it looks same size. <laughs> Understand this? Yeah. Just like we, we when we are older, we have more ability, more knowledge about things, including spiritual uh, wisdom. No? Yeah. Similar. It is predicted that in 2010, the Earth's climate will experience a massive uh, change due to the gray explosion of the sun's sun spot. It is also predicted that climate will uh, cause an oil crease. It's kind of oil shock. Uh, therefore, so it seems that there's a need uh, for its worldwide uh, awareness and efforts uh, concerning global warming. We would like to ask you too about just your specific opinion and message concerning this. What do you think we need to do as preparation? Thank you, Mr. Jung. Again, this kind of great upheaval of calamities, the only refuge that we can take is in heaven's grace. By being virtuous, by being compassionate, by being a true believer of God and pray to God's grace, then we can be saved. You see, we should start to change our way of living now. We have to change. We have to. That's the only way we can save ourselves and the planet and the whole world and other beings in it. Because as the saying goes in ancient India, that uh, any nation who produce ten great persons worthy in the eyes of heaven will not know destruction. So what meaning by ten great personage? That means the person who is truly a human being. He's a compassionate, he is spiritually elevated and he is unconditional, selfless, and he is serving others. And remember God. For doing that, we are a little bit far. So, uh, if we really want to save the world, that's the only way we can do. Otherwise, even if we dig a hole, into the mountain or under the ground to uh, stay away from the sun heat or we go up in the mountain to uh, avoid the sea rising, there are other calamities will be coming our way. Anyone who has any belief in any religion should study their scriptures again and do exactly what is commanded therein. You see, because as you sow, so shall you reap. All the religion told us that. So now we come back to the ancient saying in India that ten persons who are virtuous can save a nation. Now, how do we do this? Okay, in the ancient time, the nations are smaller than now. In that case, Ten persons in each country should be enough. But for our expanded community nowadays, we need more than ten persons in a community. I would say it depends on the population also. Now, suppose uh, in New York, for example, uh, we should call that like a nation in the old time. In New York, we probably need well, a million people to be virtuous, upright, and spiritually elevated in order to save New York. So um, I think we have to do faster than what we are doing now. I'm glad the governments are doing something, and uh, all the celebrities, all the distinguished people and organizations, just like you are today, are concerned and trying to push with all the uh, vital actions to save the planet, to stop global warming. I'm very happy about that, but maybe we should move faster and take more actions. 
Vegetarian diet, number one. Green energy, number two. Everybody work together to be frugal and protect the environment and the animals. It's not that difficult. It's just the habit that we have to change. That's all. In the news recently, there are many developing countries which are making use of green technologies such as solar energy, uh, which is clean and sustainable. And they're also trying to minimize the use of coal. We know from scientists, a great scientists such as Dr. James Hansen of NASA, that much of the carbon dioxide emitted from coal burning stays in the air for more than thousands of years. So another harmful element of coal burning is the black carbon or soot that contains up to 40 different cancer-causing chemicals that would also cause lung and heart diseases. Also, the byproducts of coal plants are highly toxic and can damage the health of people and animals alike. So uh, every country should help each other to develop more sustainable energy for our shared planet, as well as to protect the health of the people and the animals. We just cannot burn away or use up all our precious natural resources and in the process harm our environment. We must adopt sustainable, green, frugal lifestyles, which will support all life on the planet. The first step is to end the killing of animals for food. Even Dr. James Hansen highlighted this fact as he said that being veg is the most effective means for anyone to save the planet without any ado, without any document, without any trouble. We have to be frugal. Start it from the table already. We should not eat too much. We should just eat enough or even a little bit less. So that number one, okay, physically and practically speaking, we uh, can uh, uh, last longer. Mm? The more we eat, the less we will have. And other people will be hungry. And spiritually speaking, we should not eat too full. Even with vegetarian food, 80% full is enough so that God's light and wisdom can be also filling our being with a better understanding about what to do with ourselves and how to help others and how to live a true humane life while we are on this planet. Without God's light and wisdom, we are reduced to merely mortal, working, eating, sleeping, producing children, and die. There's not much we can contribute to our great self and other people, meaning they are also great beings on this planet. So being frugal is the key. Being frugal meaning also we go organic and vegan because this method will help to eliminate the excessive use of natural resource for producing meat and dairy products. And in that case, we will have enough to feed everybody and also reduce the CO2, reduce the methane, reduce all the toxic gas, even hydrogen sulfide. You know the one that uh, if you inhale it, when it's too condensed, you will die immediately. That is produced also by animal rising, livestock, and methane also. If we uh, reduce the um, livestock raising, then we can reduce all the toxic gases that is, uh, you know, lingering in our air right now. And if we go organic, vegan, then everything will be back to normal before and even better. The weather will become better. Not only the ice stop melting, the 
toxic gas will be reduced, hunger will be eliminated, war will be done with, but also our planet will revive itself and will become even better than now, more lustful, more plentiful, more abundant for all to enjoy it in clean air, peace, love, good health, and long life. Hydrogen sulfide, yes, that, that is one of the toxic gases, deadly gases, which emitted from livestock. Yes. Another is methane, another is, oh, of course, CO2. And the methane can even trigger more CO2 if it warms the climate. Thank you so much. We can talk forever about this. But um, as the president said, we have to be frugal in all means. Frugal, yeah? Saving everything we can. And the best way, the quickest, is to be organic vegan. So encourage organic farming, be vegan. I agree with your feeling about the needless action of taking away from the earth as well as the harmful activities of drinking and smoking along with meat consumption. The people who drink alcohol and smoke as well as eating meat, they have not been well informed, madam. So we will have to make them aware of the harmful effect of these actions and substance. The long damaging effects of these substances include all forms of cancer, sickness, heart problems, incurable diseases, fatal diseases, from smoking as well as shortening life. Alcohol is most damaging to the nervous system. It's shrinking our brain, nerves, and can even cause damage to our brain system. While well, meat eating makes us susceptible to many forms of disease as well as heart problems and cancer. First of all, in the case of animal protein, excessive amounts can actually cause health problems, not helping, including kidney failure from calcium imbalance. Studies have also shown that uh, people who uh, eat meat have even more vitamin deficiencies than vegetarians, seven times moreover. Furthermore, if you are vegetarian, your immune system is even stronger, so you will not catch this disease even. Professionals in the field of nutrition uh, state that the vegetarian diet, especially organic vegan diet, is the one people should turn to when they have health problems that cannot be cured by other means, even medicine and the latest invention of modern technology even. So these same persons often experience beneficial changes very quickly and cure for long-lasting health. Vegetarians have been found to live up to 15 years longer than their meat-eating counterparts. And in terms of acquiring protein, there is plenty that can be found from all sorts of beans, nut, tofu, gluten, corn, rice, and seeds. We have this information stated on our alternative living flyers. Uh, our association member in Mongolia will be glad to give it to you. So the animal-free lifestyle is a successful, productive, healthy, and frugal way to live for everyone and it also helps to save the planet. Overconsumption in general can lead to even more mass production and overuse of such harmful substances, you know, as uh, pesticides, which hurt our fragile ecosystem, causing disastrous effect for not only humans, but flora and fauna as well. So it is true that uh, we should be more aware and uh, inform others about all this impact on the life of every being on the planet. Through this, as well as the animal sparing vegetarian lifestyle, we will naturally become more frugal, clear-minded, and more loving, and help to stop war hunger, war, and disease forever. The first step is vegetarian.
<laughs> again and again. <laughs> I'm sorry. If I have other solution, I would have told you. And we don't need this conference. Because vegetarian is the quickest and most effective and long-lasting forever. And it will halt the global warming right where it is, and it will even improve our world. Our world will become better because of the loving energy that we generate. Being vegetarian stops the killing circle and reduces greenhouse gases most quickly. Planting trees, green technology, sustainable energy, etc., etc., can help also, but it takes longer time and it's not karmically effective. We can maybe use a green technology or riding bicycle forever, banish all the cars, but that's not enough, as I have told you before. Being vegetarian, we stop 80% of global warming, the greenhouse gases, we stop. So, vegetarian, vegetarian, and vegetarian. I mean vegan. <laughs> but uh, everything else... We can try. We have to be frugal in any case. But we don't have time to even develop technology, even if there is such thing as a technology to develop, to erase greenhouse gases and stop the global warming. We do not have enough time to wait in this critical, dangerous period of world peril. It will only worsen the effect if we keep waiting longer and longer. We have to start to be vegetarian because a noble lifestyle, a compassionate energy will dispel all the bad karma, all the negative influence that has been created from the killing of other beings. They have been crying, screaming, and their suffering reaches heaven and pierces the earth. We cannot reap anything good out of something so bad like that. We must foster loving kindness. We must begin benevolent action. Just to be vegetarian, that's very simple. Nothing else truly necessary for the moment. Religious leaders can give voice and strive to be a living example of the noble teachings according to their original founders, such as Jesus, Prophet Muhammad, Buddha, Guru Nanak, etc., etc., who espoused the compassionate vegetarian lifestyle. The scriptures from the teachings of these sages all emphasize the need to care for one another and be good stewards of our earth. In the Christian Bible, it is said that meat for the belly and the belly for meat, but God will destroy both it and them. The Buddhist Mahaparanivana Sutra also stated that eating meat destroys the seed of compassion. And a meat eaters, every action will terrify all beings due to their bodily scent of meat. Therefore, religious adherents need to be reminded that to solve the environmental problem, we need to put these teachings into action. And the most effective action is something that citizen can do immediately. Be veg. Of course, another is go green, meaning take care of the environment and be frugal in our usage. To be veg is living in accordance with our true religious beliefs. Forgoing meat and adopting the plant-based lifestyle means we put the principle of compassion into action. So please, continue your noble duty as a reporter to remind people of the dignified moral lives that humans should lead by being veg and doing good deeds apart from going green. Thank you, Mr. Kim Dong Hyun, for such a noble journalistic approach that you are doing.
One of the things I'm very concerned about, just as an ordinary citizen of this world, is the increased use of nuclear power. Uh, it's common nowadays for scientists and governments in the world to claim that nuclear power is in fact the only way to reduce uh, greenhouse gas emissions and to solve the energy needs of our rapidly growing population and our increasingly materially developed society. Um, it seems that to any intelligent, rational person, nuclear wastes are simply far too dangerous um, to be using that as a power source. So I'm wondering if you think that um, this is actually a totally wrong way of looking at the problem, that we should be using uh, a very dangerous power source um, to deal with uh, this exponential growth of um, material developments and human population. Maybe we should be going the other way and looking at simplifying our lives and our material needs and even drastically reducing population growth. I appreciate your thoughts. Thank you. Good day, Ms. Thompson. <laughs> How are you doing, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> Great. Thanks for your very enlightened and caring and very, very important question. Uh, yes, you are right. Uh, nuclear energy is not the all solution answer. But if we are frugal and use less on materials, we can decrease some of our reliance on energy sources and reduce somewhat our greenhouse gas emission. But uh, as mentioned earlier, being vegan is the most frugal and the key to a more secure and stable world. With a halt to livestock raising, we will stop producing enormous amounts of uh, methane, a gas which is uh, 72 times more potent in heat trapping qualities than CO2. Not only that, there are tremendous uh, savings for precious resources and finance, of course. The resources are very, very, very precious, more than finance. Namely, for example, water. And uh, growing food for human consumption uses vastly less energy than growing the food for animal feed which is then consumed as meat later. Therefore, if we focus firstly on stopping meat consumption, then we will have time to develop sustainable energy sources, which could even be safer and greener than nuclear power. It will take too long to develop technology and test its efficacy and check whether is uh, produce any harmful byproduct, you see. So we do not have much time now. I think we should encourage people to be vegan, and we will see so much new inventions in time, new technology that are beneficial and safe for our world. Right now, vegan is a solution. Everything else we can discuss later when we are still alive. Thank you, Miss Penelope Thompson, for your concern. Why do you think humankind came to this point of being so destructive to the nature? Oh, I'm asking myself mm. this because, uh, hmm, uh, how come we didn't see it earlier? Because there are some nations like Aboriginal people in Australia or Native Americans in yes. America that they knew it all the way. Yes, yes. Not 200 years ago, yes. um, Native American elders said, if you will go this way, yes. this is going to be the consequence. Yes. And they knew why we didn't, why, people, ah. why Western civilization didn't know these things. Why were we so blind? You see, because the so-called civilization developed too fast. 
and they feel superior. They don't listen to the so-called elders, mm -hmm. that what you mentioned. Mm -hmm. yeah? The one that look very simple, live simple, and so the so-called civilized and developed people thinking mm -hmm. that we're powerful. And the native elders don't know anything because they live so simple. We don't listen. Yeah? And not only we don't listen now, we don't listen to Jesus, Buddha. They always tell us the whole Bible, everywhere you can find. Okay, don't eat meat, don't kill animals, don't destroy nature. Mm -hmm. Respect all creatures of God because they're all from God. Mm -hmm. Same Buddhism, same Christians, same Islam, same Jainism, same Sikhism. All say protect nature you know, protect animals. Yes, for example, like that. Mm -hmm. uh, even if the Native American, for example, if they have to take something from nature, they do appreciate, respect, and try to replace it somehow, mm -hmm. you see? Mm -hmm. And not completely destroying it mass scale, like mostly what we do right now. Mm -hmm. so we have to change, quick. But uh, I'm just talking to you. <laughs> I don't know how about the mass outside. And of course, uh, my people, they have television, mm -hmm. yeah? Mm -hmm. so whoever want to, to listen can listen everywhere in every corner of the world mm -hmm. because we have internet uh, mm -hmm. TV, yes? Mm -hmm. But that's all we can do, yeah? And we also uh, print leaflet, flyers, mm -hmm. to uh, tell people that it's really happening. Please mm -hmm. take care, please do something. And that's all in our power to can do now. You see, it's up to humans to choose, mm -hmm. to decide. And we should decide to live. We should decide that we can do anything at all in our power to preserve our lives on the planet. Because it's not just one life, two lives. It's not my life, your life is the life of the children and the next generation. Mm -hmm. Just to have a beautiful planet and we destroy it is very, very pitiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Uh, we have to decide a different way. We have to walk in a different way. That's it. We have to decide that, okay, we're going to be courageous. We do whatever it takes. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't take much. Just to be vegetarian. Mm -hmm. Just to plant a couple of trees, each person. Mm -hmm. Just to use a sustainable, free energy. That's all there is. Mm -hmm. Three simple steps. Mm -hmm. Refrain from animals, you know. Of course, I mean also killing by war, you know. So, uh, so it's only very simple. Refrain from killing each other and animals, yeah? Mm -hmm. For any reason, for food, for profit, for gain, for anything at all. Mm -hmm. Refrain from killing. Use, uh, produce and use sustainable energy. Plant trees. Mm -hmm. Yes. We can have everything. We just do that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Not like we have to do a big deal stuff. No. Very simple. The sun is there for us to use forever. The wind is there forever. Mm -hmm. The waves in the ocean you can use forever. Mm -hmm. It will never be finished. Yeah? Compared to other energy that maybe you have today, you don't have tomorrow. Mm -hmm. The sun, you don't have to. Nobody can possess the sun. Mm -hmm. Nobody can stop you from using it. So very simple, eh? Mm -hmm. Vegetarian, sustainable energy, plant trees. And of course, we pray, yeah? We pray so that we'll be strong, that heaven will help us, yeah? To choose the right way. Mm -hmm. That's all. Four, solution. Very easy. Everybody can do it. Don't you think? Sure. Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah. yes. I think even if, if not just for the planet, to save the planet, but we should be more uh, compassionate, no? The animals are so helpless and small. We're big and powerful and we can use all the product to eat and to, to live. We don't have to kill the weak and helpless just to survive. And now that our planet even depends on it, according to UN report, mm -hmm. so we, um, so more we must do it. Mm -hmm. It's time. And you look everywhere, huh? mad cow disease must canceling of cow meat in the United States, mm -hmm. bird flu, blue tongue disease, uh, you know, um, salmonella, fish mercury raising everywhere. Mm -hmm. Animals is not good for us, even health-wise speaking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. Everywhere is a warning sign. And uh, the elder have talked about that long ago already. Why do they tell you to protect the environment? Why do they tell you don't cut tree, don't destroy this? Because they want to protect the environment, not because they don't want you to cut it or anything like that. Not because they want to dictate you, mm -hmm. not because they don't know anything. They do know a lot of things. The elder, like uh, American tribe, they know many things. Mm -hmm. Not many listen, that's the thing. Yeah. <laughs> yes, the people, they think they're civilized, yeah. and they think the people who live simple in a tent and don't build houses and all that, they mean they're, they're not civilized. No, no, they are civilized. That's why they're frugal. Mm -hmm. They live simple, so they don't destroy nature, mm -hmm. so that they can have more of nature for a long time to come. Not just quickly cut, cut, tree, build everything, and take everything, and then uh, we, we finished. Mm -hmm. See, they're just simple because they are wise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they live in the tent because they are too noble inside. Mm -hmm. They don't want to destroy more than what they need. Mm -hmm. In all the scripture, it says, "Take what you need, but no more than that." Mm -hmm. That's what the elders, the key. they do. Yeah. That's why they live simple. Mm -hmm. Many wise people, they live simple. We can have everything. Just mm -hmm. some, some are too greedy, and that's how we arrive as what we are today. Mm -hmm. So the situation now is like we are spending much, 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 much more than we earn. It's like if you're having a job, you earn only $1,000, and you spend like 10000 20000 or even $100,000. That's the situation we are in right now. So you ask me whether the earth will survive. I say, yes, maybe the earth may survive some part, but not the living beings on it. I have repeated many times, that the root cause of our present predicament is animal product-dependent lifestyle. We consume too much animal products, we eat too much meat, we kill too many innocent beings. We are addicted to this kind of diet, a meat diet, and this is the main cause of our problem, the main cause of the danger of our survival right now is the cause from meat diet. The more we stick to the meat diet, the more we need oil and other fuel, resulting in even more shortage in all necessities. As you have mentioned, even the solar system also consumes a lot of electricity right now to produce, and the capability has not reached the uh, level that we wanted it to reach. We spend a lot also energy to produce this solar system, and yet it's not satisfactorily the way we want. So I suggest only one thing, just to be veg, be vegetarian, choose a vegetarian diet, then all will cool down, all disaster will disappear. We will see how simple and happy life can be, and how we will think clearly, and how our heart will be more open, more blissful. We can understand many more things than we have up to now, and that we really can live with much far less than what we thought possible, and still be happy, survive, satisfied, and healthy. Just ask yourself one question. What's wrong with living a frugal and saintly life? Why not living a frugal and saintly life? The virtuous life, the life without guilt, the food without blood, to live without costing the earth and all lives thereof. Just put down those meat. A simple change of diet can minimize so much dependency, can stop so much of suffering, and can save the whole planet. Oh God, how easy to stop global warming! If we just change to animal-free diet, 
change to vegetarian lifestyle, then we will have the chance to keep this home that we so love, also for our future children. Supreme Master, this month um, in August in Ireland, there was a salmonella scare uh, and there was a nationwide recall of meat products from one of the country's biggest sandwich chains. In fact, these recalls seem to be coming more and more frequent. We read about them almost every day. Somewhere in the world, meat is being recalled due to E. coli or salmonella poisoning or some other disease. It seems that if we eat meat, it's not only affecting the environment, but we're actually taking risks with our own health. Why do you feel that we're seeing more and more of these recalls? Well, madam, uh, clearly it is a warning sign, huh? As heaven's last resource to sound an alarming bells, we must listen. And now, the animals, they are also trying to help waking up human race by sacrificing their lives. Anyone who can communicate with the animals by telepathy would uh, confirm my view on this. Now, please, if anyone is listening, we must stop all act of harming and killing, hurting humans or other species. Stop damaging the environment and live simple life, as simple as possible, according to our resources. More in tune with nature. Live and let all live so that our lives may be spared and blessed with happiness. Master, next question is from Jose Luis Perez Alvela Veraum, and he's not here today. He is a vegan doctor and nutritionist. Would like to ask you the next question. How can we make our life much simpler and harmonious despite all the material things around us? How? <laughs> yes. It's a very noble-minded question. I agree with him. Uh, simple living and high thinking are the secrets to a long and happy life. One of the best ways to bring simplicity into our lives, uh, he's already doing in choosing the vegan diet. I'm very happy to see that. Living without killing or bringing harm to other beings can restore harmony and health to yourself and the world around us faster than most anything else, especially for such a busy life as uh, his, Dr. Berum, where caring for others is a part of his uh, profession. The love and compassion of the animal-free or vegan diet gives you more strength, patience, and understanding. Another way to cultivate simplicity is to spend time also in the tranquility of nature or create a natural environment at home where we can go for peace and quiet. Reading mind uplifting books such as spiritual scriptures as well as practicing meditation are also good ways to remind ourselves that we truly don't need much to be happy and live a contented, peaceful life. People uh, who meditate, according to scientific research conducted in the U.S. on meditation, uh, no matter what religion they came from, or even if uh, they don't think they believe in God, meditation is still beneficial and in fact has been found to help in remaining calm and serene, as well as giving an optimistic outlook on life. Being vegan, as uh, Dr. Beron is, also helps considerably in benefiting from meditation, because he already purified his system by removing toxic meat and animal products from his diet. So the combination of practices like uh, meditation along with daily harmonious living through the vegan diet will lead to a simpler life with fewer material desires 
but still full of happiness and contentment. Dear Supreme Master Ching Hai, climate change brings new questions to the modern society. From economic development, the increasing standards of living to luxurious ways of living even for daily activity compared to the earlier ages. All these are now challenged once again by the catastrophic climate change that is believed to be caused by human activity. One phenomenon that is also very contributive to a GHG emission to the atmosphere is the rapid increase in global population. Also as one of the consequences of increased living standard, the question is, how should we human beings develop is there or will there be a limit for this development? How should the society be built? Thank you, Master. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you. It is true that we must be careful of our way of life and try to be more frugal and protective of our precious resources. We should not lose ourselves in the material aspects of life without paying attention to our moral standards and spiritual development as well. This is important also, even more important than material development. Or else we will be in trouble sooner or later. We might even lose everything, including our material development, our lives and our planet like we are in the fact facing now. I'm glad to see that uh, you walk the talk because you are a vegan. <laughs> uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. The animals, thank you. And you look so handsome and healthy. Can you stand up and let everybody look at you turn around? <laughs> he really look handsome, yes. Look at him, huh? Uh, please don't be shy. You must save the, the animal at all costs. Now, if we, the human race, develop as a vegan society, and better yet, a spiritual vegan society, there will be no limit to our material development. Because then, sir, we will have the wisdom and the love to propel us on a balanced, straight course of the future, bright future for our planet, our children. If we have the spiritual eye, we will find that past civilizations, both on Earth and other planets, sometimes developed too quickly in the uh, technological sense, but the spiritual development, their store of love was low or empty. And what we see, we see the pattern is that no society can last long if they refuse to sustain the lives of their own members and fellow beings. I mean, include all the beings like animals and trees. Or if they destroy the environment they live in, then that society cannot live long. We can see that also in historical record. Just like the proverb that says, the frog does not drink up all the water in the pond in which he lives, because he needs the water, see? So we cannot destroy the environment and live in it as well. It is not the rapid increase in global population that is the problem, sir. It might contribute, but a little bit. We had enough to sustain everybody, more than that. We have enough food to feed the world twice over. Right now even, if we don't feed all the food to the animals, yes, you know that. <laughs> the real problem is our meat consumption, the tendency of mass killing that we have made a part of our lives and we look at it as a normal life. It is not normal. 
It's not normal that we cause suffering to others who has feeling and who shed red blood and call that a food or earn a living. We cannot earn a living or sustain a living by death. Meat consumption is the way of not just cruelty, but of waste on unimaginable gross scale. To illustrate, let's compare a meat eater to a vegan. One meat eater requires two hectares, that's four acres of land, to support him. But that same two hectares or four acres of land could support the healthy lifestyle of 80 vegans. Huh? Compare that. Now, let's look at water. A meat eater uses up 15,000 liters of water per day because of the meat diet, which is 15 times as much water as a vegan would use. Because we use a lot of water to raise cattle and to wash them, to clean them, etc and to water the crops that feed the animals as well. So we use a lot of water just for one piece of meat. Now, there is also a dramatic difference in terms of emissions from the diet. The meat-based diet's emissions is equivalent to driving a car 4,758 kilometers. That is 17 times the emissions for an organic vegan diet which is equivalent to only 281 kilometers. In other words, an organic vegan diet produces 94% less emissions than a meat-based diet. 94% less emission. Huh? So if we just choose a vegan diet, we will save the world in no time. 94% less Pollution emission from a vegan diet compared to meat diet. Huh? Now, vegans also save immeasurable pollution costs, energy costs, resource costs, disease treatment costs, global warming costs, tax costs, plus the emotional costs related to the sorrow and suffering of the people. That is much more than money or anything we can imagine of. Now add it together, the impact of a meat-eating population is just unimaginably huge and wrong. Whereas the impact of a vegan population always comes out to be a tiny fraction of the meat-eater's terrible impact. So if we don't eliminate meat consumption, we could never reach even a low, low impact on the environment, no matter what else we do. We must stop the most inefficient, unsustainable, life-destroying practice of murdering animals and stop it now. Stop it yesterday. The animal meat industry has to go be it animals from the air, the land, or the sea. Can we imagine, huh? The animals, they just fly in the air. They don't even touch us. They don't do anything to us. We shoot them down. We trap them, drag them home, and eat. We call that food. The fish swimming in the sea, mind his own business. Do nothing harm to us, ever. Don't even know us, don't even see us. We net them up, suffocate them, drag them to our table, and we call that food. That fish might have a lot of babies waiting for him. That bird might have a lot of babies waiting for her. And the land animals, they have not been so many. It's just we breed them. Imagine if we are in the position of that confined pig or chain cows or suffocating chickens or ducks in overcrowded animal factory. Imagine it's us, then you understand what I'm talking about. We have to stop all this cruelty because we are civilized human people. We are civilized, we are educated, we are religious. 
We have been taught by all the gracious prophets, since times immemorial, to be a dignified human being. So we have to stop all this mass murdering the animals from air, from land, or from sea, from anywhere at all. That's the only way we can and should develop sustainably for our children and grandchildren and future generations. That's the only way we should develop. And after all, the vegan way of building society is the most befitting to the human standard of compassion. It is truly the way of most peaceful, paradise-like, children of God-like civilizations, because we save lives. Not only we save the animals, we save our lives, we save the lives of the world, of the people in the world. Then we are heroes. The planets that were saved from destruction, like Venus, were saved because their societies became vegan. I mean the one that are saved, that I mentioned, there are four Venuses, only two of them are saved because their societies became vegan. The other two Venus were destroyed. One is completely gone, one is uh, boiling hot, uninhabitable, because they have not been vegan. The two Venus are safe because they have become vegan. Many planets that did not survive, like Mars, perished with meat still in their mouth, between their teeth. So it is up to us. So if we alone are vegan, we ourselves will change at least. And if there are enough of us, our society will change. You know how it changed your life, yes, the vegan diet. We become smarter, more sensitive, more compassionate, more uh, considerate to other people and environment and animals around us. We became a different person, <laughs> and we are happy to become so different, yes. If everyone in the society become vegan, we will develop in an incredible way as a whole planet in the universe. And that time, there will be no limit to our spiritual development and even our social, technological, material development, once we turn to our compassionate, God-like nature, everything else will naturally be built on this new foundation. And the correct foundation, the only foundation we should have, of loving kindness. And the society will develop itself and manage itself accordingly, in peace, wisdom, compassion, and dignified coexistence among our living beings. Thank you, Mr. Harianto. Please advise your clients to do the same. All information concerning the scientific evidence of climate change and its solution is in Supreme Master Ching Hai's book, From Crisis to Peace, free to download at crisistopeace.org. Para pemirsa yang lembut, kami menghargai kebersamaan Anda dalam episode hari ini yang berjudul Berhematlah itu dimulai dari meja kita. Kutipan dari ceramah Mahaguru Singhai bagian kedua dari dua seri di acara antara guru dan murid. Tetaplah di Supreme Master Television untuk acara positif lainnya akan hadir selanjutnya Biksu-Biksu Kuba dan Desa-Desa Vegetarian di Thailand Utara dalam acara Kata-Kata Bijak. Semoga kekuatan ilahi dalam batin membawa hidup Anda pada realita yang mencerahkan. May the divine power within transcend your life into an awakening reality. For more details, please visit 
suprememastertv.com/bmd